Hi, I'm Tom Howell, and today I'm going to go over the adjustment and installation of the Denon DL103R cartridge onto the Technics 1210G tone arm. And I'm going to adjust the tone arm and I'm going to adjust the cartridge. And I'm going to also show you the cartridge alignment tool I got. Now when I got the um, tone arm cable, the AG12R4 from Furtec, they it came in this nice box. And inside this box is where I put all my turntable stuff, which is really great because I was thinking of uh, getting another, um, you know, something to put the stuff in and it fits perfectly. I don't still don't know what this little thing is anyway. Um, so one of the things I'm... I got um, also that I'm going to open right now is this right here. Riverstone, I think, on it. Riverstone, I mean. Riverstone Audio Company and um, Vertical Tracking uh, VER 2.0. Vertical Tracking Force Gauge. So it comes in this nice little little box. I like these little boxes. And um, I'll look at this later once we get the cartridge ready to um, install. So I'll set that aside for now. And we also have to put the head shell onto the tone arm. So let's do that right now. Or I guess I'm going to do it. So I kept this on here. Now it did say to take the, um, oh, that's why I had it on anyway. All right. I was going to take the dust cover off. Got to take this little blue thing out of here. Oop. Let me, actually, let me get the head shell on there first. It just goes straight in there and then you just adjust it like that. Okay, so we, uh, the way you take the dust cover off is you lift it up like that and then you go straight up like that. Alright, so this is supposed to be zero. So I put the anti-skate thing on zero, which is what I just did. Actually, I have one of these to blow stuff. It's very good. I recommend it. This little thing here. It says uh, G-O-D uh, and it's a little blower thing just for that kind of thing because I don't you really should be blowing with your mouth on record stuff so anyway I'll go over that when I go over other record things so this popped up so now what you want to do is you want it to get to like hover okay so you push it down and it clicks a little bit it seems that there was a, something that clicked that time when I put it in and now now it's adjusting it. So you have to feel your way in a little bit. This is why I'm doing these. It's because people don't tell you this stuff. You have to put in a little bit and then you feel something and then you turn, start turning it. So it has to go far enough into lock evidently. And then you have to be real careful about this part because once you get the tone arm, you put this down and then Okay, let me back up a little bit. Okay, now it's kind of floating. That's kind of what you want. You want a little bit more floating down. It's kind of floating over now. Let me put it a little bit more here. You don't want to do that. See, it's back up a little bit. That's about right where it is now. See, it's kind of just floating horizontal. We're going to make some fine adjustments later, but as you saw, I almost screwed it up like I 
I always do something wrong. Okay, but um, yeah, it's but it's floating about right. So that at that point is when you take the other side weight and you put it at zero. So you can hold that down with that. And then there's a line, but there's not a line. Well, I guess there's not gonna be a line on the weight because you're moving the weight around. So, okay, so that seems to be what you do. You line the zero up with that little line there. And, oh, no, okay, it's a permanent line. And, yeah, glasses are a little better. I'm gonna get my little screw thing out again my screwdriver I think I also have it in here in this Furtech box really happy with this now the Furtechs are expensive cables they cost as much as the cartridge that I bought but the Furtech I'm gonna keep I mean the cables you get you're gonna keep for a long time you know the cartridge you're gonna upgrade the cartridge and you are you gonna change the cartridge so um, so that's why um, I think it's better to uh, invest in the cables first and then the cartridge um, afterwards. So, let me set that down here. Okay, so like I just said, um, I am now going to um, make adjustments to the cartridge so I have my little um, I have my little uh, screwdriver thing to make adjustments to the cartridge and I'm going to do that now and I know which one it is and I know that it worked well it's this one right here and let's Pull this up, and there you go. The tone arm is just because there's no, there's not weight. Now, what we could do, let's go ahead and basically adjust the, actually, let's adjust the tracking force. The tracking force should be for the uh, DL um, 103 is 2.5. So I would grab both of these and I turn it so that it reads 2.5. Oh, 2.5 is one of those notches. So there you go. It's at 2.5. Um, you just have to look at it going up, I guess. And that's why I get the uh, tracking force gauge, just to make sure that it's um, correct. Because there's kind of no other way of checking it unless you have a you know, stylus force gauge, a tracking force gauge. So with that on there, make sure it's not too much. You don't want it to be too much. I worked at a high-end shop uh, a long time ago where we, well, the owner put too much weight on the uh, needle and broke it. It was a very expensive needle. Um, okay, so what you do here is you take this and it is, you put the little needle on the square you can, where the arrow is, and then you can look at it and it, it needs to be adjusted this way. But on the other one, let's see how it looks. Oh, the other one also needs to be adjusted this way. So I'm going to put it over there because otherwise I'm just going to screw it up and get a loose in this one. Oh, it's already kind of loose. I'll hold the side and I will move it a little bit and I'll try to tighten it down. But you, know, you hold the side, I think that works. And let's take a look at it again. It's better. It still needs to go in just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's see if I can do it without loosening it. Thank you. 
two hands. Yeah, I think you could control it better maybe with two hands. Yeah, I, get, I think the way it is now is good. So I'm going to try to hold it and tighten it down. Alright. Now I have a rice paper mat. Um, I think it's Anna Dialogue or one of the, those other guy YouTube people um, that recommended this and I had it on my well tempered and I really tested it out on my VPI and I didn't really test it on the other turntables I've had I use it on my Rega it does seem to get rid of the um, it does seem to get rid of the static and you can get a fancy one for quite a lot of money I think but this one is not expensive it's between 20 and 50 bucks I can't remember what but something like that so but it's hard to find I don't know if I found it on eBay or where but it's rice paper mat so um, I'm going to try using it. I also have a um, Michel, um, I don't know if you say how you say it, uh, record clamp, which you put this little felt thing on here, and then you put this on here. And I'm going to try that also. Now, it seems to fit pretty snug on the spindle compared to the spindle of the VPI. And I couldn't use it at all on the Rega because the spindles are different. So I don't know if I'll get a better one or just try this. Okay, so assuming that this is okay, um, the anti-skate you're supposed to move to 2.5, same as the, um, I forgot to mention that, same as the cartridge weight there. So, or whatever the cartridge weight is, that's what you put the anti-skate at. Okay, so after a little bit of time I did uh, take out the um, stylus gauge thing right here oops it's very sensitive also um, I have this little thing from Hudson Hi-Fi let me just tell you what this thing is um, you're supposed to use this you put it on here and then you I'll put it this way I guess and then you move the head shell cartridge over and you kind of try to adjust it so that the top of the head shell is flat but there's really it's it, it seems pretty flat on this one um, and it's very hard to see actually but this seems pretty flat the head shell top seems to go over and I don't see on some turntables on some turntables you can adjust the um, you know, this thing, whatever you call it, for the head shell. I don't see it on this Technics 1210. I know on a well-tempered and some of the others, you can make that adjustment. So I don't see it on this one. But um, also you're supposed to adjust the, um, I guess it's the vertical tracking angle. But for me, with this curved tone arm, because it comes out and you, it's not straight. So... Um, it's hard for your eyes to focus in a line. You move your eyes up a little bit and it completely changes where this is. So if you have a Technics 1210, I, I don't think you need this Hudson Hi-Fi. This might be better for something like a well-tempered or maybe some other turntable that's, you can have more adjustments and you could see it with the flat tone arm. With this one, because the tone arm curves 
and there's not a place to put it and the head shell takes up a lot of space. For me, I just can't see it with my eyes that well. So I recommend um, not um, not getting this. Uh, I mean, you could get it and you could try it, but um, I, I, it really didn't do anything for me. Um, okay, so I, um, you, I got this, the um, little uh, Riverstone Audio uh, vertical tracking adjustment. And um, it, I put, you just, you know, you put a AAA battery in there, you put the top part on, you kind of like hook it on one side and then you screw it down on the other side. It's pretty simple. I don't think I have to go over how to do that. And then to test it, I just, um, cause you, you can recalibrate it, but I turn the, turn it on and I put the little five gram weight in there and it's exactly five grams. So, um, we're going to go with this and, um, let's go ahead and, uh, put it into position. And then, uh, here we go. This is the big deal here. So I'm putting the cartridge on there. Okay, it says 1.4, so it's very off. 1.4, so I'm going to move it this direction. Is that the right direction? Well, I'll find out. Let's make sure it's like right there in the middle of the thing where it's supposed to be. Yeah, I can zero it in there and Oh, 2.580. That's pretty close for me. I'm good with that. So I'm going to adjust the little thing on the end. So it says 2.5 right where it is. I don't, again, I don't see like a mark. It'd be nice if they had a mark on there. I'm just going to go up here. It says 1.5 where I have it. So that was way up. So the top part here. It's going up and down. I'm just going to say that's the 2.5 looking straight, straight down. Maybe there is a mark somewhere. I just don't see it because I know other turntables have had it, but there is a little line up in the front. So now that I did that, let's go ahead and try it one more time. Turned off. If it's different, then uh, I'll try it a third time. 2.575. Okay, that's pretty close. 2.575. was 2.5. Okay, let's take it back, back over here. And the vertical tracking, the like I said, that other little, this little thing should measure it, but it looks like it's pretty flat. And I, with my eyes and it's black, I, I, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I think it's pretty good. Um, and, uh, I will check this um, again. Two point five seven five, same as it was a minute ago, of course, because I didn't touch the end there or anything. So that gives me confidence. I will take it apart. Here is what it looks like: the little display. I'll show the camera here, and I'll show you guys. Um, and then you loosen this part up. And then you take it off here. Let me turn it off. Oh, where's that little, oh, here's the five gram thing. You don't want to drop that. And then this goes in here like that. And that's very nice, I think, I guess. So if you like the packaging, Riverstone Audio. Uh, Steve Gutenberg recommended that, um, anyway. So there it is, the, um, the Riverstone Audio. Um, seems to be working pretty good, stylus gauge. And this is, um, now let me, let's put this on here, see how it looks. Let's go ahead and um, turn this around and I will attach the, um, the RCA cables. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to have to, this is going to be the tricky part. Now, as far as the power cable goes, I, I'm using this AudioQuest because I had it. 
The one that comes with it is not bad, but and I don't think it matters too much with the power cable. But here is the here is the um, Furtex. So here's the Furtex. Taking these little things off of here, taking this off of here, and I'm going to show show you this into the other camera here. Maybe hopefully you can see it. That looks like maybe. Okay, so here we are, a little bit of a different angle. Um, I've got the camera here, so I'll switch over to this if it works. And um, I think I'm going to hook up the, um, the uh, try to hook up the um, ground wire first. And it's a little bit of a pain. Looks like I have it in there. I happenstance. I don't know why they made it difficult like this. Seems like they could have put it in an easier to reach place. Yeah, it looks like it's right. I mean, how else would it be taught? Okay. Now let's see if we can get the... Uh, okay, the red one is on the far side. So let's get the white one in there first. Okay, the white one's in. You have to really push it in tip of your fingers. Okay, look they look like it they look like they're in. Looks like it's looks kind of okay from here. Um, the only other thing to do is to level level it. I'm going to level it, level the feed and everything with the dust cover on, because I'm going to use it with the dust cover on. So um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, so here's let's put the dust cover back on. I'll show you how to put it back on. So you put it up like this, slides in, and you put it all like that. And there you go. It's got the whole thing assembled now, and uh, this is what it looks like. Um, so let me go get the uh, leveler. And uh, we'll do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to level it here. Yeah, it's still level pretty much from what I did before. So, I mean, it's hard to get it exact without screwing the feet up. Yeah, this needs to come up a little bit. You don't want to get it too high on one. And keep raising it up because then the feet will come off. The feet will come apart. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Let's turn it on, see if it works. No, maybe it on. Oh, here's the on. Oh, oh, you just you just move the top, and that turns it on. I guess here's the little strobe thing, and then there you go. That actually works. Um, all right, I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna put a record on. 
Now in the next ones, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you how to I clean records, which is a long involved process. And Tom may show you how he's, the progress he's made with his new audio room that he's building in his basement. So stay tuned for those things and I'll see you next time on the Audio Knots. Hit that like and subscribe, I guess. There's, we got a couple subscriptions, so leave a comment below um, if there's anything you would like me to talk about. I have a lot of stuff here to talk about, so.